All right, so welcome to the video. This is a long delayed video, which is the Tour de France 2022 preview of all the stages. It's gonna be a long one, but I think it's gonna be worth it because I think this stage or these stages, there's a lot which are very exciting. So anyway, it starts off with a 13 kilometer TT. It's pan flat. There's no real need to go look at it. Um, the next stage again, uh, if we look at the stage profile here, pretty flat again, but Apparently there's a lot of crosswind opportunity. That's basically all Denmark's gonna be, is gonna be the TT and maybe crosswinds. So no need to get too stressed. Again, stage three, you can see here, um, is basically going across some exposed places. So could be crosswinds, that's all I've heard. But knowing the Tour de France, it's very rogue if there are crosswinds or not crosswinds. Um, then we've got like a rest day, which is always a classic. Well, this is Dunkirk to Calais. Then we've got a really important stage, which is the cobbled stage. I really like having cobbles in the Tour de France because I think it means that they can't just be a what number man they actually need to be able to ride a bike which I think is really good so personally very happy there's cobbles obviously there's some unfortunate issues um, that can occur but last time there was cobbles Bardet did flat three times but there wasn't really too much time gaps between anyone and I think it'll be interesting to see how they get on obviously Tadej Pogacar has done really well in under 23 races before uh, which include cobbles but if we look here um, you can see like none of them, they don't have any like massive five-star sectors like Mons en or or um, Arenberg for instance. Um, but there's still like a fair amount, 20k of Pave, um, it's good enough. Um, but yeah, so I reckon it's going to be decent. I'm not sure if it's going to decide the race necessarily. Um, I mean Roglic can't ride a bike that well, so maybe it will be detrimental to him. I'm not 100% sure, but it will definitely be an exciting stage to watch um, and just interesting to see how everyone gets on. Obviously, caveat that if it rains, then that it will be exciting. This again goes to Belgium in Longjui. Uh, we can look at the final climb here. There's not a stage profile, but this looks like a classic sort of Van der Poel, Van Aert type finish. Again, I don't really find these too exciting, these stages. It's basically just like a bunch sprint up a hill instead. So some people do find it exciting, but generally not too much. Anyway, we now go ahead to stage seven. I believe some of these don't have every, there hasn't really released all the profiles yet, which has been annoying, but they finish up La Ponge de Belfi. It's also super Ponge de Belfi. Now, personally, I think they go up Ponge de Belfi a bit too often, like a, a bit too often, because you think when Bernal won it in Lawatas at 2019, um, you had Dylan Turns win up there. Um, that was super Ponge de Belfi on the gravel stuff. Then the next year you had it on the TT and now, okay, you had a year off last year, but like, come on, they need to have some variation. Okay, they, they probably pay a lot of money to have the Ponge de Belfi, but it's a good climb. I don't think, I think it's a bit overrated because there's some flat parts. So if you've got a big train, it's just gonna come into like a Pog versus Rog sprint up here and I just can't be able to watch that. So literally like if I were you chewing for the last K, I reckon it's gonna be a pretty dull climb. Uh, it's a shame you think it's going to be nice, but it's just often not. Um, but anyway, we will we'll, sorry, we'll get away from this. Sorry, I'm, I'm on the wrong thing. Anyway, stage eight, uh, again, is like one of these stages where they haven't released the whole finish, but it's one for the punchers. Again, it's like an up and down finish. Probably actually going to be one for the break, to be honest, because this far in, I reckon the GC teams will be like, no stress, no need to worry. We'll uh, just uh, get out the road. This again is in Switzerland, and more 90% of it is in Switzerland. Um, and then, yeah, it goes up Colden Mose, 13k at 44%. They go 30k and out there, so nothing will happen. Colden La Croix, it's all right. Uh, and then the final climb is 15k at 6%, and then finishing Chatel, it will be a breakaway stage again. It's it's nothing too GC heavy at the moment, but I think often, you know, you do gotta have some um, sort of, not necessarily boring ones, but you've gotta have some dull stages uh, in order to make them more exciting. Uh, and then, if we, we just step ahead, so then we've got stage 11, which is, as I think is actually be a pretty good stage. Phil finishes up the Col de Granon, which is a pretty decent climb, like 13K at 9%. I believe I've done it, if it's where I think it is. I think I have done it. Um, it's a pretty rogue climb. It's like a dead end, I'm pretty sure. Um, and Galibier, obviously, always a big fan of this. 2,600 meters. We know what's happening. It's going to be a sky, any Australian, sorry. Burnout Boy is going to be flying up there and hopefully they can make a difference on that to destroy the, the Pog and Rog combo. Um, and then, yeah, Cold of Granon again, 2,400 meters, decently steep. That will be a very, very good stage. Excited to see that, definitely. Uh, and then the following day is Bastille Day, so French rider, every single one will be getting in the break. And again, this is a proper stage. Uh, Cold of Galibier, again, 23K at 5%. Goes up the Lauteray, which is a really easy climb. It's like 4%. But the last part, Quintana holds the climbing record from 2019. 
Uh, and yeah, it's good that it goes up to 2,600 meters. Again, I like the back-to-back -back altitude stages. I think that makes it, the race a little bit more open and people, it suits burnout more. And I think you've just got to make sure that if you don't have it to a high altitude, I think there's no way you beat Poggy or Rog um, if you're in someone. And I'm, I like random people winning Grand Tours. So maybe Miguel Super, Superman Lopez could have won the stage, yes, uh, the, the previous day stage. Outdoors again, 13K at 8%. It is what it is. We all love Outdoors. Um, so yeah, all is good. And then we're going to go on to stage 13. Um, which is like a bit of a rumor. No one knows what's happening. This is a thing. I don't really understand why they like release the stage and then don't, but this is a classic finish up to Mond on the aerodrome where the last time we were there, or well, one time we were, I don't think it was the last one. Steve Cummings won, obviously that was a huge win. Uh, this again is an absolute classic. Yeah, so last time we were there was Omar Fraile. Um, but yeah, that's a pretty classic. And then this is like a finishing car song will be for the break. Uh, it might be a sprint stage. Then we go over to the Pyrenees, so this is obviously different to often. Often they do Pyrenees first and Alps, but this is the sort of classic uh, Alps and Pyrenees. Uh, this is a breakaway stage, um, nothing too cool. The Mur de Peguir is, a Peguir is okay, but it's nothing crazy. Anyway, we'll, um, we'll see what happens. I'm not too excited. This one is a better one, Saint Gaudon to Perigude. They go up the Col d'Aspan, decently hard climb, but not really too hard. The Alquet de Anquisan is another sort of like rampy climb. I've done this one as well. I've done a fair few of these ones, to be fair. And then Col de, uh, de Val Laurent Azé, uh, don't know, 11k, 7%. I mean, it doesn't it doesn't look a great stage, does it? I mean, it, it's not one of those ones where you're like, if we look at like the Aspin here, it's like, it's all right, but it's not one of those ones where you're like, oh, fair enough, it's going to be a 10 out of 10 banging um, stage. It's just one of those stages where, like, this is the final climb. Like, okay, the last part's steep, but, like, it's just going to be a pog and rog sprint. If it does come to that, I believe it will be a break potentially quite far back. Just depends who's there. Alter Cam. Are we going to see anyone come close to Rasmussen, Rasmus, Rasmussen's time up here? I doubt it. Uh, but, yeah, again, Cold Obisk, pretty classic. Cold Spandel, another classic one. And Alter Cam. I just think, like, the final climb is, like, it's, like, decent, but it's nothing crazy. The issue is... Because people keep getting better and better, the speeds they ride up the climb keep getting faster or pretty quick. So it means more people can sit in. So then it's just a bit hard to like really like go for it properly. Um, but anyway, stage 18 they missed. But the key thing is stage 19 is something boring, but stage 20 is a 40 kilometer time trial. So add that to 13K prologue, you've got 53 kilometers of time trialing. That is decent. And that definitely will suit Poggy, Roggy and them lot a lot more than Bernal, Superman, and all the rest of them. So, in conclusion, who do we think is going to win? Well, it's hard to bet against Tade Bogatra, isn't it, in reality? So, I reckon, if I was a betting man, I would go for Tade. But it depends. He said he wants to do different challenges. He might decide, like, lol, going to do Giro this year. Or lol, let's win Flanders. I don't know. I mean, if I were him, I wouldn't just win the Tour every year. It's a bit dead. Like, I'd definitely try and do some other objectives. But, obviously, he wants to do whatever he wants to do. He might just be like, you know what, I want to win five Tour de France's. After that, I'll go and do some other stuff. And Roglic, I assume, will just be like, I actually need to win the Tour because I can't just win the Vuelta every year. Like, that's cool, but you've got to do a bit more than that um, in order to cement yourself in history, I reckon. And that's won, like, nine Vuelters in a row, and everyone's like, oh, fair enough. Um, but anyway, it looks a good Tour. Pretty excited about it. I mean, I always think the Tour sometimes disappoints, sometimes is exciting, but in general, it's it's always a bit, like, eh, a bit cagey sometimes. Uh, but, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, I'm excited to see some cobbled action. I think more cobbles is good. Um, and maybe some crosswinds in the first week. But, anyway, cheers for watching. Let me know what your thoughts about the Tour de France are, um, who you think is going to win, and what you think of the stage. And uh, we'll see you in the next one.